you are unusually fearless and willing to go in the face of other people telling you something is crazy. And I know a lot of pretty crazy people, you still stand out. Uh, where does that come from or how do you think about making a decision when everyone tells you this is a crazy idea? Or where do you get the internal strength to do that? Well, first of all, I'd say I actually think I, I, think I fear, feel fear quite strongly. Um, so it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, but there, there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough, that you, you do it in spite of the fear. So speaking so, of important things. Like people shouldn't think, I, 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 I should, people shouldn't think, well, I feel fear about this and therefore I shouldn't do it. Um, it's normal to, be, to feel fear. Like you'd have to, there would be something mentally wrong <laughs> if you didn't feel fear. Um, so you just feel it and let the importance of it drive you to do it anyway? Yeah, I, you know, I, actually something that can be helpful is fatalism. Uh, to some degree, um, if you just if you just accept the probabilities, um, then that diminishes fear. Uh, so, um, when starting SpaceX, I thought the odds of success were less than ten percent, um, and I just accepted that actually probably I would just lose lose everything. Um, but that maybe we'd make some progress if we could just move the ball forward. Even if we died, maybe some other company could pick up the baton and move and keep moving it forward, um, so that we'll still do some good. Um, yeah, same with Tesla. I thought you know, the odds of a car company succeeding were extremely low. Most people do a lot of talking and most people don't put in the effort. There's nothing you can accomplish in, in life with the right amount of work. The challenge is, you know, are you willing to, to do the work? And, the reality is most people aren't, but that's the opportunity, right? It's, I mean, it's like people you know at school. Most people are lazy, right? They, they just, they barely get through it. And, and so that creates opportunity. I tell my kids that A, if they want something, they're gonna have to earn it. Yeah. And B, if they don't work hard enough to earn it, I'm gonna sell them off as medical experiments. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the line in our house. Right? <laughs> uh, I'm going to sell you off as medical experiments. <laughs> you need money? Okay, we'll sell you off as a medical experiment. We can get you money that way. <laughs> I'll go give blood. Dad, I'm seven. No, I don't care. <laughs>
uh, all the side effects that come along the way uh, can be that much more uh, rewarding and significant in their own right. Um, and so, you know, I feel lucky uh, that I fell into doing something um, that I feel really matters, you know, getting people information uh, around the world about anything. Uh, I, I wish there was a way to convey that too, uh, you know, to the world at large. Obviously, all of you uh, already have this religion, uh, but uh, it's uh, very rewarding when you work on something you think is going to make a big difference. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit harder, but I think, uh, I think the passion that one might bring with it uh, brings so much more energy to that that you're more likely to succeed. Throughout the years in business, I found something, which was I'd always ask why you do things. And the answers you invariably get are, oh, that's just the way it's done. Nobody knows why they do what they do. Nobody thinks about things very deeply in business. That's what I found. I'll give you an example. Um, when we were building our Apple Ones in the garage, we knew exactly what they cost. Uh, when we got into a factory in the Apple II days, um, the accounting had this notion of a standard cost, where you'd kind of set a standard cost and then at the end of a quarter you'd adjust it with a variance. And I kept asking, well, why do we do this? And the answer was, well, that's just the way it's done. And, and after about six months of digging into this, what I realized was the reason you do it is because you don't really have good enough controls to know how much it costs, so you guess, and then you fix your guess at the end of the quarter. And the reason you don't know how much it costs is because your information systems aren't good enough. So, but nobody said it that way. And so later on, when we designed this automated factory for Macintosh, we were able to get rid of a lot of these antiquated concepts and know exactly what something cost to the second. Um, so, in business, a lot of things are, I, I call it folklore. They're done because they were done yesterday and the day before. And so what that means is, is if you're willing to sort of ask a lot of questions and think about things and work really hard, you, you can learn business pretty fast. It's not the hardest thing in the world. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. When I started Microsoft, I didn't think of it as all that risky. I mean, I was so excited about what we were doing. It's true I could have gone bankrupt, uh, but you know, I had a set of skills that were highly employable. And in fact, my parents were still willing to let me go back to Harvard and finish my education if I wanted to. You've always got a job with Mayville. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the only, the thing that was scary to me wasn't quitting and starting the company. It was when I started hiring my friends and they expected to be paid. Uh, and, and then we had customers who went bankrupt, customers that I'd counted on to come through. And so then I got this incredibly conservative approach that I wanted to have enough money in the bank to pay a year's worth of payroll, uh, even if we didn't get any, any payments coming in. And you know, I'm almost uh, <laughs> true to that the whole time. We have about 10 billion now, which is, is pretty much enough yeah. for the next year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway. You know, I, if you're going to start a company, it takes so much energy that, you know, you, it better overcome your, your feeling of risk. I don't think that you necessarily, if you're going to start a company, should do it at the start of your career. I think there's a lot to be said for working for a company, learning how they do things. You know, if you're young, it's hard to go lease premises. They, they made that hard for me. You couldn't rent a car. Uh, when you were uh, uh, under 25 at the time, so I was always taking taxis to go see customers. Uh, and uh, the people would, you know, people would say, well, we're going to go have a discussion in the bar. Well, I couldn't go to the bar. Uh, and, but, you know, that's fun because I'll tell you, when people are first skeptical and they go, this kid doesn't know anything, then when you show them you've really got a good product and you know something, they actually tend to go overboard and they think, whoa, you know, they know a lot. Uh, let's really do an incredible amount with these people. So our youth, at least in this country, uh, was a, a huge asset for us once we reached a, a certain threshold. It is hard 
It's hard to hire old, older people um, because they'll be a little bit conservative about whether they should come and, and take the risk. And it took three or four years before we could go out into the normal sort of employment pool. But those, those problems that come with starting a firm, you better think of those as, as part of the, the pleasure, part of the, the, the challenge that, that is part of the, the excitement. Our company is built on people. The success we've had is because of our people. And I believe that. You believed it from the beginning. All of our associates believe it. We've made partners out of our folks rather than employees. And they know that we've been sincere in trying to share the profits with them. And they, in turn, have worked harder than our competitors. We've kept our prices lower than our competitors' prices. We've led the nation in... Uh, in, in, in cost of doing business, in sales per square foot, in all the measurements you can imagine over about a 15-year period in this business that, that, uh, that we've all put together uh, here in Bentonville, Arkansas. Think things out for yourself. Come to your own judgments. Don't simply conform uh, to conventional ways of thinking, conventional ways of dressing, conventional ways of acting. That a lot of this, uh, a lot of things are, are based on fashion. Even morality at times is based on fashion. It was once, fa you know, slavery was once not considered not to be immoral. Uh, you know, people are, you know, people are shocked that the, uh, the ancient Greeks had slaves, that, that, that we had slavery in this country as recently as, you know, 130, 140 years ago. So there are more moral facts. You have to really go back to first principles and think things out for yourself, whether they're scientific principles or moral principles or business ideas or product ideas. You have to think things out for yourself.